Hi, and welcome to Washington. We know that you can't be here with us right now, and we hope that you're all staying safe and well. In the meantime, we'd like to introduce you to some of Washington's most interesting historical stories told by our community leaders and history buffs. We hope that when all this is over, it will inspire you to come explore Washington's past and present. Enjoy. So what does Washington, North Carolina have in common with Cleopatra, Samson and Delilah, The Greatest Show on Earth, The Ten Commandments, and Hollywood, California? Well, the answer is Cecil B. DeMille. Mr. DeMille grew up here in Washington. It was his boyhood home. His family had had long ties here to Washington. His grandfather, in fact, was a mayor of Washington during the Civil War. Cecil B. DeMille went on to be one of Hollywood's greatest motion picture directors. His career spanned from the silent movie era all the way through the talkies. He was an award-winning producer. In fact, up until his death in 1959, Cecil B. DeMille was still making great movies. Although he was very, very famous in Hollywood, Cecil B. DeMille never forgot his ties here in Washington, North Carolina. He would often come back to visit family and friends. Many of Cecil B. DeMille's family members are buried at St. Peter's Church Cemetery. We love to claim that he is one of our own. Cecil B. DeMille is one of our greatest personalities. Just prior to the Civil War, Washington was a major shipbuilding area in North Carolina. We had more shipbuilders in the 1850 census listed in the, for, for Washington than any other city or town in North Carolina. During the Civil War, they, uh, the Confederate States contracted with some of the local shipbuilders here in, in Washington to build the uh, Confederate gunboats. And one of the reasons that the Union forces came and took over, captured Washington, was to destroy those, those gunboats. And they were burned in the stocks right here in the location about, about where we're standing. In uh, 1863, the Confederate forces laid siege to the, uh, the town. And across the river over here, there were several Confederate batteries. Uh, the Union forces had uh, uh, batteries on Castle Island behind me, and several Union gunboats were located in the harbor here to defend against the siege. That siege lasted about six or seven months, and uh, some of the houses across the street here uh, actually took damage from Confederate fire from across the river. Another interesting person from Washington is Dr. Susan Demick. She was born and raised down on East Main Street in the Lafayette Hotel, which was owned and operated by her parents. In 1863, at the age of 16, Susan moved to Boston with her mother, at which time she fell in love with medicine. She went to Zurich to study because the United States was not at that time allowing women to study medicine. She came back and worked in the Boston Women's Hospital for a few years on a trip overseas to, for a vacation. Unfortunately, Susan passed away when the ship she was on crashed and sank just outside of Cornwall. At that time, um, she was the first woman to become a physician from North Carolina. Here at the Arts of the Pamlico Historic Turnage Theater, you're going to find two buildings, one erected in 1910, which is our old vaudeville theater that isn't restored yet, and our fully restored Palace Theater, which was built in 1928. So the vaudeville era began in the early 1900s and ended abruptly in 1926 to 1928. Vaudevillians used to arrive by water or railway to act in theaters across the country. The water and railway were how they got here because cars weren't invented yet. In 1928, vaudeville ceased to exist and movies with sound and acting on stage became all the rage. So the Palace Theater was the second building built by Cat Turnage. In the Palace Theater, he added a stage as well as a movie screen because he wasn't sure that talkies were going to fly. And he's actually right because today, movies are seen mostly at home or on your phones. So the stage is much more used than our screen. 
The Washington Civic Center was originally the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad Depot. The first train arrived in Washington in May of 1892. The trains coming into the Washington Depot to exchange the passengers, goods, and mail were from Kinston, Greenville, Rocky Mount, Tarboro, Weldon, and Plymouth, North Carolina. The train depot became the property of the City of Washington in 1976. Renovations were completed in the mid-1980s. Today, the 14,000 square foot Civic Center functions as an event venue and offices for the Washington Tourism Development Authority and Sound Rivers. Who was Edward Peed? First off, Edward Peed was a Washington citizen. He was a Washington businessman. Edward Peed was a member of the Salamander Fire Company. Salamander Fire Company was an all-black fire company made up of the black business community. Edward Peed is the first recorded line of duty fatality at Washington Fire Department in Washington Fire Department's multi-year history. Edward Peed responded to the Great Fire of 1908 in Washington. It is referred to as the Great Fire because at one point it looked like the entire town was going to burn down. We didn't have big fire trucks like this. We didn't have large help. Edward Peed used buckets of water to put out hot spots. When he did that, a wall collapsed and that's how he lost his life. Washington, North Carolina is one of the most haunted places in our state, with three centuries of supernatural occurrence coming together here. Sailors, a ship's captain, soldiers, politicians, preachers, pirates, even a queen, all haunt the streets, waterways, and buildings of this town. The old Beaufort County Courthouse, the historic Turnage Theater, and St. Peter's Church Cemetery are but a few of the many stops on our tour. This is a historic ghost walk. So in addition to covering all the supernatural paranormal activities of Washington, we also talk about the history of our town. The Underground Railroad here in Washington functioned because Washington was a major port. It was the second largest port after Wilmington, a very significant port. There were a lot of shipbuilding here, and those ships went not only to ports in the north and the south, but they traveled across the Atlantic Ocean as well. And so as a freedom seeker, with the help of abolitionists who were white, black, Native American, immigrant, anyone with a strong moral compass. With the help of abolitionists, you were able to get on those ships and secure your freedom as far away as Canada, England, and a host of other places overseas. And if we can um, somehow be able to share how people work together at such a difficult time in our country, then we certainly can do that today. All people deserve to be treated with dignity, kindness, and respect. That's what the Underground Railroad is. That's what we share those efforts here and how we can do the same in the culture and climate we're living in today.